Yeah. Sometimes this life gets hard. But you gotta keep your head up. Straight up. I did this for you too. What's my purpose? Yeah. Lord, what's my purpose? Uh, I gotta watch my back, man, these people got me nervous yeah. I know I'm doing good, but really do I deserve this at the moment? I can't hear success, knocking like room service Philip, first of all, was a likable guy. Everybody loved Philip. Um, great personality, um, always cracking jokes or, or messing around. Like, if he was somewhere, you knew he was there because he was probably the loudest person in the room. They will always find somewhere to go play basketball. I mean, they I mean, they were on the run all the time, constantly playing basketball, basketball, basketball. You knew when Tukey had the ball, something good was gonna happen. I felt like I was watching greatness. I would describe him as a phenomenal basketball player. He really could play. He was probably the best all-around player in our area. This was a crazy kid, just hilarious. Maybe the funniest person I ever met in my life. But that was my heart. That was my heart. My sister was my heart. It's very tragic that he lived this long with that hurt, the hurt that he had in him. Philip Tukey Stanford was the only son in a family of four. His sister, Brittany Daniels, was shot and killed during a drive-by at the age of five in the Lonsdale community. Tukey was three. The next year, his father, Philip Sr., was shot during a robbery and later died from the injuries. Tukey was four. Shortly after losing his father, his mother, Otoya Daniels, was diagnosed with leukemia. After battling the disease for nearly three years, she died. Tukey lost his last remaining immediate family member at the age of seven. With Tukey, you saw yourself. Not only was he representing himself, representing his school, he was representing his whole family. He was the only person left. Now imagine that burden of not only your school, but your entire family, because you're the only one left. You have to carry on that whole legacy. Tukey didn't just carry on. He made a name for himself. He was a standout on the court and in the community. This man touched a community. When they talk about Lonsdale, this man was Lonsdale. I will let him know you are very strong. No matter how much you think people don't care about you, the whole community cares about you. Like you are the community's child. You are your neighborhood's child. In the mid-90s, we had a chapter, we had a couple things that were going on. We had uh, uh, several juveniles who actually had sort of kind of gone out of control. They'd gone nuts with weapons and vehicles and were uh, engaged in a series of drive-by shootings. It was uh, probably because they were so young they didn't know any better. You know, back then, you couldn't even wear a star jacket if it was red or blue because you could have got shot. It didn't matter how old you were. And it was a very turbulent time back then. We also had a kind of a cocaine war that was going on in terms of distributorship of cocaine sales in the city. So you put those two things together and it certain, it spelled uh, an increase in violence that most people at the time didn't really pay attention to until Brittany was killed. And then suddenly everybody went, whoa, what's going on? It was my brother's wedding. He was getting married. I was um, at the church. We heard shots ring and screams outside, and I'm like, are y'all shooting at the kids? Because that was the only thing outside, was the kids playing outside together. And they kept saying that Brittany was shot, Brittany was shot. One of the bullets had hit her and she died instantly. Almost a year to the day later, Philip Sr. was shot by a 21-year-old man during the course of a robbery. He died a month later from the gunshot wound. When his father died, he clinged. That's what made him cling even more to his mother because his sister passed. She was gone. The father passed. He was gone. So, I mean, just imagine in a four or five year old life, it's, I got to hang on to her because she all I got left. Shortly after Tukey's father died, his mother Otoya began a protracted battle with leukemia. Nikki Daniels took care of Tukey while her sister was getting chemotherapy treatments in the hospital and as her health continued to decline. 
when night time came, he wanted to he'd go home with his mother, be with his mother, sleep with his mother, and wake up beside his mother. While in the hospital, Otoya and her son spent as much time together as possible. He would lie beside her in bed and color in his coloring books. If it was after hours, they would talk on the phone, sometimes until he fell asleep. But after three years, when Tuki was only seven years old, he lost his mother to cancer. Philip really, really, really deeply, so badly missed his mom. He wanted his mom, he missed his mom, he loved his mom, he always was a mama's boy. There's just something about when your mother hugs you and tell you everything's okay. It's like everything's okay. He longed for that. I never talked to him about it because I didn't want to, he was always so happy. I never wanted to be like the reason to talk to him about it and make him sad or whatnot. They're like, well, he's always so happy and he's always laughing and smiling and making everybody laugh. And I'm like, that's what you see. I see the deeper side. I see the feelings that he actually have. We take his feelings and bottle them up for him, basically. And I feel like his feelings were bottled up for too long. They all came out and he couldn't handle it. On the afternoon of January 25th, 2012, Philip Tukey Stanford took his own life. He was 18 years old. He had a character to make you laugh even when he was hurting. He was very charismatic. Everybody really loved him. He was always the life of the party on Twitter and on Facebook. He really kept everybody entertained. He was lactose intolerant. He just passed gases in like the strangest places, and you and you couldn't help but the smell. It was it was terrible. He'd be eating a bowl of cereal at my house, and he'd be like, "Oh, I forgot I was lactose intolerant." And then for the rest of the afternoon, it just it just be crazy in there. My mom would be like, "Tuki, I, I know you did that." And he'd just be like, "My bad." He was able to, um, you know, deal with all those different tragedies and still. Again, yeah, have a positive outlook, be positive all the time, to be uplifting, to be, um, he, he was that person that made everybody else smile and everybody else's day good. He was that guy. There's some people that just are that guy where they just that cool. Jay-Z's that cool. Tukey was that cool. He just, you know, I, I never, I can't say anything bad about him. He changed the face of West High basketball. He will always be remembered for that. It was like he was born to play basketball. Like he didn't have to lift weights. He didn't have to be in shape. It just came natural. And he could make you laugh. He could make you cry. Uh, he was, he was a gift. I just started getting to know him because he was always made big time shots, clutch shots. And like, I didn't fear him anything, but I had to see him with the ball and like when it got down to crunch time, because he always he always delivered. He shined, you know, for you know, for triple A district MVP, accolades and prep extra. He wasn't just an average basketball player. He was a great basketball player. Also, he was a great young man. From a young age, Tukey sought refuge through basketball. The court was a place where he could leave his problems behind. No worries, no sadness, no pain. He cultivated that, and others took notice. Your outlet was a hoop, a basketball, and a crowd. And he was damn good. We'd be playing pickup ball, and there would literally be people just coming outside. Like, we'd be at the park in Lonsdale, and people would come watch us play. You could tell he was a smart basketball player, um, that he could play different positions. He could guard bigger guys. He was a strong guy. Um, he could play on the perimeter. Uh, he had good ball handling skills, good passing skills. He could shoot the ball. But again, he was also a pretty strong physical guy. He could go inside and get some rebounds and score if he posted up. So there were a lot of different things you could tell he was good at. When you are a gifted athlete and you have that persona, I think it just tends to draw people towards you. 
to guide a group of young men. Because he was a man. He was a man on court. Phillip knew when the guys were in the zone and when they were not in the zone, and he would definitely say, you know, straighten up, let's go. Tukey helped all these guys get better just because he was that good of a person. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is today's society doesn't look at the person who makes everybody around them better. He just had so many friends. I remember a new guy had came in from school from out of state or something, and he was he brought him in, and I was like, Tookie, who was that? And he was like, oh, oh, he from out of town, and he had got in some trouble out of town, and I got him with me now, and we gonna get everything straightened out. And I was like, what are you talking about? You gonna get everything straightened out. And I was like, don't you let him bring you down. And he was like, auntie, I got him on the basketball team. What you talking about? We ballers. It's like it's hard. I've witnessed a couple fall apart. These people yeah. in my team close to my heart. Yeah. My brothers in my team been there from the start. Yeah. So I could never let them go. Cause I know they got my back while I travel down this road. I can feel so much pressure. I think I'm about to explode. Yeah. It got me losing my mind. I think I'm losing Man, control. Is real. And you never know which way to go. I do remember one quote he always said to me that I will never forget. Cause like, uh, people used to always mess with me about my mother's car. He looked at me and was like, don't worry about all that because you can't struggle forever. That's something I never forget. Something I never forget. We come from where we're from. There's not too many people that make it out of there. Like, and people would tell us, they see us together, like, y'all two got what it takes. Y'all both have what it takes to make it out of Lonsdale. Y'all could be the first two. And I really thought we were going to be the first two to make it out. After graduating from West High School in 2011, Tukey received a scholarship to a junior college in Gainesville, Florida. He began training as a guard for Santa Fe College in August. However, something wasn't right. Tukey, normally an outgoing and exuberant young man, was spending a lot of time in his dorm room. His coach described him as quiet, reserved, and polite, a far cry from the person his family and friends knew him to be. Of course he loved basketball, but he just wasn't happy. It was just that emptiness of the people that he loved that's just so far away and he can't really reach them like he normally can. That's what I thought it basically was. Our community backed us so much when we were there. It's kind of hard not to have that backing you when you're going away to school. Like People just at your game all the time. But he was just so homesick, he had to get back home. By him already feeling like his mother, father, and sister had been took it from him, and that family was already gone. It was like a reality check for him that the whole family is gone now, and he couldn't take it. After less than two months in Gainesville, Tukey decided to leave Florida and return home to Tennessee. Now he has, like, everybody in the community coming to him, wondering why you didn't stay, why you didn't go. All the pressure from her, you know, you could stay, you should have stayed, you shouldn't have came back, you should Now he's feeling like he didn't let down the people here. Uh, he didn't do the right thing for um, the basketball team, or he didn't represent the school right because he came back home because he couldn't, they didn't know he couldn't deal with it. I don't think people realize that Tukey was only competing with himself. There was nobody else out there. Maybe I've let, I think I've let people down. So why not just part my ways and go? He was like, I think about everything that I go through that nobody notices. And out of the 18 years of my whole life that I've been living, this is the worst that has ever hit me that I don't have my family and I'm not where I actually want to be. The question of why was he back from so many different people that supported him, it kind of like put him in a funk. My mom had called me and she was like, um, 
Tuki's uncle was looking for him. I texted him and I was like, um, I was like, call me. And then I called his girlfriend and I was like, how you talked to Tuki? And she was crying. I'm like, what's wrong with you? She was like, uh, she was like, Tuki shot herself. I was like, what? Ma'am, I can't understand. You're gonna have to calm down. My master just shot himself. He is bleeding everywhere. <laughs> what's the address? I'm like, mom, what's going on? And so she gets to the, um, she gets to the emergency room, and I just hear people in the background just crying. And she gives the phone to my aunt and Tuki's aunt. And she's like, uh, she's like, do you want me to tell? I was like, tell me what? And she was like, she, before she even got to finish, I just threw the phone and just broke down crying. And all these people were calling me, and they're like, like Tuki's gone. I mean, Tuki shot herself. Are you all right? I'm like, man, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do anything anymore. I just wanna go home. I wanna see my brother. And it's just like, everybody's calling and calling, like, are you all right? I'm like, man, it's like, I don't believe it. I don't believe he's gone. I wanna talk to him, and so I keep texting him. And I keep texting him. And he's not texting back. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I read those texts every day. And it just like hits me that my brother's gone like every day. Like I have dreams every night. I'm talking to him and they still here. And so I tell I ask my mom again, I'm like, is he really gone? She's like, they're in the room. They saying he might he might be alright. And I'm like, is he gone? She's like, Yeah, he's gone. By night and by day. Oh my God. Not him. Despite what everything, like not him. Like the last person in that family, you know, anybody but him. When he died, it hits you. It hits your soul because you feel, again, you feel, you feel like you're a part of him. The Lonsdale community lost somebody so special. That community lost somebody that was one of their only hopes. He was more than just a boyfriend. He was the best friend. He was like my brother, like my protector, everything. I felt safe like while I was around him, no matter what was going on. He wasn't like mine, he was mine. He was my third child. You know, he never got the understanding of how did his mother, father, and sister end up leaving. And he didn't get to go. So we're also talking about a child's question that never was answered. We mourn, we move on. Not only do we move on, we become better. We do great things in honor of him. You know, there's always this, there's this guy who's a rapper and he said, I'm living out the dreams for all the people who never made it this year. So the kids now live out your dreams, do the best that you can for Tuki, because he didn't make it. Lord knows what that kid could have done, but with you there, and you're still here, you could do great things in his honor. If you're not gonna do it for anybody else, do it for your friend. And I just remember the last thing he told me was to represent Knoxville. So I feel like me and Brandon was doing something that he probably wanted to do, but since he didn't get the opportunity, he wanted us to do it for him. Like, kind of like if we made it, he made it. Cause you know, he's like a part of us. We both talked to each other a lot about it. We're like, we're gonna make it out of here and we're gonna do a lot for this community. And now we're still gonna make it out of there. He's with me, so we're both gonna make it out of there. The lesson that I've learned through this is basically to stay strong. Because you never know how strong you are until you have no choice but to be strong. No matter how many obstacles you're hit with, if you're still alive to breathe and talk about it, then you're blessed. Life will throw you some storms. Um, but if you trust God, um, that he'll see you through the storm. And that you can, you can move forward, whatever is thrown at you, you can move forward and get through it. And that there is a community of people that do care. And so that whenever you feel like there's no options, there are. I said, I'm gonna keep a three in the air and I'm gonna keep a three on my heart. 
every day. And I've always lived with the motto of you have to live every day like it's your last. The, the moments we have are so precious. I miss them so much. And I love them so much. And I wish that day never did happen, but it did. I don't know what exactly all was going on in his mind that day, but God do. You feel like you, feel like you should just go, go. go. I rep my city, I rep my state, and honestly, this music is my only escape. Food for thought, man, I got a lot on my plate.